Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, a place where you would normally not see me checking in on my usually outdoor worm bag. The outdoor worm bag is today 300 days of age, so happy 300th day in service to the outdoor worm bag, and I can't seem to break free from referring to it as the outdoor worm bag, but clearly we're indoors now because, you know, even though two, two weeks ago when we last checked in on this system, the weather outside was still pretty mild. Um, the forecast did show that we were going to enter a fairly cold period of time, and we did. So I'm glad I bought this thing inside because by now it would probably be frozen solid. And, um, well, any of you who have been fans of this top covering piece of plywood with the fancy graphic on it, it, um, it pretty much cracked in half. I mean, technically it's not two pieces yet because there's still a couple tiny pieces of wood holding it together but barely last time right after I got done filming I went to move this thing aside and get it off the bench and it cracked cracked pretty bad I mean we can still keep it on top just as a kind of a you know kind of a memorabilia sort of a thing <laughs> but uh, I think we're not going to be using it much more. I'll have to come up with some sort of a new top cover for this system for the next iteration. And every year I do one of these outdoor systems. It started out as an overwintering project a number of years ago. I would have to say it was five years ago I suppose because every year I would give it a new number. In the beginning I didn't start numbering them but after the second or third time I started referring to the iteration of the outdoor system as version 2, version 3, so on, up to this one, which is version 5 at this point. I've got little chunks of this plywood floating around in here. And I'm going to assume that, well, I don't know, there's something about plywood makes me wonder whether it's something that the worms would be able to break down or not, just based on the way it's manufactured and assembled. I'm just sort of questioning it, so I'm removing it. The, uh, the whole concept of feeding zone indicator which is pretty popular here in my worm bins is is one that doesn't really apply here based on the way we fed last time. Last time we came in here with um, the same stuff that we're going to be feeding them today which is just coffee. I've got some of my coffee here. No coffee filter this time and a little bit of my worm chow what remains of it. I'm gonna have to whip up another batch soon but we we opted for a a small particle size feeding here and we just kind of blended it in. We didn't just pile it in. We kind of sprinkled it in. We blended it. We sprinkled it in. We blended it. So uh, we really don't have any one specific spot where the feeding was applied. So the feeding zone indicator is, again, just sort of a, um, a thing that's in here as a memorabilia sort of thing almost. So I had, um, I had put paper coverings on here and I had propped up the, the plywood top covering in the interest of allowing some of the system's moisture to be able to leave through evaporation and I think just from the way it felt when I lifted it up off the ground you know two weeks of being able to dry a little bit I think it might have actually dried some the same way I showed last time I guess I could show it again this is not just a fabric bag it's actually two fabric bags which is going to help a little bit in terms of holding on to the system's moisture but to help it even more, I jammed plastic bags in between the two fabric bags going all the way around to, um, to try to help the system hang on to its moisture content and it does seem to have worked quite nicely. So I, um, I figured we'd come back in here today. Today on the 300th day in service, the system is getting its 27th feeding. And all right, we're finally getting down into the material after me just chit-chatting so much. And it does seem like we've got a good number of worms all over the place. I'm usually used to seeing worms kind of concentrated in one spot, the, um, the spot wherever that may be that they're feeding gets positioned. But sometimes I try to spread the food around a little bit better and it, um, it results in the worms being kind of spread out more. So I don't know if we're gonna see any sort of a worm ball sort of a thing today. Today I just thought we would kind of 
try to stir things around, try to assess the system's moisture content. This is the, um, the shell of a mango seed. Earlier I had found some stuff like corn cob bits and all this other stuff over here I piled up was just uh, all the top material, the stuff that was a little bit drier by being out here on the top surface. There was a point in time, a couple check-ins ago I believe, where we had inspected the material, gone through the whole thing, and we made a nice collection of all the different food bits and leftovers that were in the system, and we, we sort of consolidated all that stuff into one location down the middle at that time. And I'm not really after that now, so I'm not going to worry so much about it, although I am starting to assemble a little bit of a collection of larger sized food objects here. It does make me wonder, you know, how much longer do I let this system go? I mean, usually the measure is not finding all kinds of residual bits of food and bedding. I mean, large things like this can naturally be removed and possibly relocated with the worms to their new home, but it's more like these fragments of leftover bedding, like chunks of leaves or cardboard or whatever it might be the small particle size stuff that would be nice to see broken down a little bit further before we start thinking about harvesting the castings from the system. I'll tell you, it's so weird how the worms like to get in between the, uh, this is like a weird material and see how the fabric as I tug on it here a little bit, there are little spots where the worms can just sort of get in underneath the loops of the material and they do that all over the place. And trying to remove them from that is pretty difficult. I believe that the one way to do that easily is to let them get out of there on their own, possibly just leaving the system kind of out in the, in the bright lights and sort of get them moving because of the bright lights in pursuit of some sort of a darker place to be. And then perhaps they'll wriggle out of the fabric on their own. But if you were to try to remove them yourself you'd end up ripping the poor little wormies in half and I do believe that a, a worm will continue to survive even after being torn in half that way oh, here's the other half of the mango seed last time I know we bumped into this one the one that was ripped open but this one we didn't see last time this is the one that's not yet opened up that way I wonder if I can dislodge its contents it's a little bit stiff, but yeah, we've managed to empty the other half of the mango seed over here. So yeah, I mean, if you were to tear a poor wormy in half, I believe it would survive. One part of it would, but you wouldn't end up with two living worms. One part of it would wither away and be, you know, dead, basically. <laughs> but I do believe that worms can actually survive being torn in half. So the material is kind of nice and fluffy and crumbly. I wasn't quite sure what to expect, you know. I had this sense that the material was perhaps a little bit overly damp. And that was my main reason for wanting to um, cover it only with paper and give it an opportunity to ventilate and lose some of its moisture content slowly. You know, the paper was there to not allow the moisture to exit too quickly. And it was kind of nice to be able to remove that paper in the very beginning and actually see a couple worms right there on the surface telling me that even the top surface despite being fairly exposed to evaporation and drying was still comfortable enough for worms to be crawling around on so I um so I think that we found a pretty good cover that's gonna probably allow the system to continue to dry a little bit, although I'm even questioning whether I would want to see much more drying here because the material is got a nice moisture content that does seem to be um, allowing the worms to occupy pretty much all the material everywhere in the system. There's no, there's no one particular section of the system to me that seems like it's um, more favorable or anything like that. It does seem like the entire contents of the system are in great shape and the worms are happy to be throughout it 
So I, I felt like I had already um, done a pretty thorough job tilting up almost all the material going right down to the bottom and stirring it up and aerating it that I figured I would just continue on even over here on this section that I had piled up some of that top material onto and I'm just maybe perhaps force of habit finding these larger chunks and piling them up into a little bit of a collection so we do have a little bit of a collection of larger chunk leftover foods kind of makes me wonder if we should keep them in a consolidated fashion here's another corn cob yeah I guess you know even the stuff that we collected off the top surface might be kind of nice to keep all together with those leftover food chunks that we located along the way and sort of reconstruct a specific feeding zone down the middle like we would normally do I mean I had definitely intended to um, feed very similarly to the last time which was to simply sprinkle in all the the coffee and the worm chow and blend it in and perhaps now would be a good time to begin doing that and I'll do it at this very lowest level before we start back filling it just to get some of this coffee and worm chow blended in with the surrounding materials and then I think all of this stuff that we gathered can come down here into the middle so we've almost in a way managed to assemble a, a solid chunk larger item uh, feeding made out of leftovers versus it just being you know small particle size coffee and worm chow so wow I think I just almost emptied the entire container there but that's fine that's kind of what I thought would be the way to do it because now as we backfill the feeding zone we can simply blend in today's feeding and yeah that's going to count as today's feeding right there all that coffee and worm chow it's almost exactly what we did last time although last time I think I just blended it in a little bit more thoroughly maybe four applications over the entire application of the food I, um, I think I pretty much got the entire feeding done with two doses this time although you know what I've got so little of this coffee in here remaining why don't we just give them the rest of it yeah, it's quite a bit but that's fine and even this worm chow I'm thinking perhaps perhaps I'll save a little little tiny bit just in case I don't get around to making more but it does seem like it's time to get down to the business of creating some more worm chow one of these days soon and and now I've got my motivation which is a tapped out jar <laughs> so you know I'm just looking over at the video camera noticing how much time has passed and it's quite surprising because I tell you time flies when you're checking in on systems that you're curious about and this one I was definitely curious about and um, and I do appreciate the company you know it's great having people that are also interested in seeing how the worms uh, are doing in my systems so as we get things covered up here and put away let me just say thank you thank you so much for watching it's always great to hear everyone's input and you know at 300 days of age I believe it might be time soon to try to separate these little wormies from their finished castings but I'm really not in a rush, you know. It's a, it's kind of a do it whenever, sort of a time scale. So uh, we'll see when we get around to doing that. Um, perhaps we'll just stick to this method of covering up, just to allow a little bit more moisture to exit. Or should we? I don't know. I'm tempted just to push this all the way down and to sort of stifle any further evaporation because you know what? I think that is the way to go at this point because. Um, the material did feel really fine all the way through all crumbles nicely and if it were to dry out any further I don't think it would be too good for the worms we got to keep things comfortable for them keep things nice and damp so all right everyone that's it for the video once again I do appreciate everyone sticking around especially those of you that are still here at the end so thank you thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.